Hey everybody, Jack Boyles with Steam Engines USA and today I have a wonderful treat for all my steam engine enthusiasts and friends, collectors. I have two D32 Walesco steam engines and we're going to take a quick look at them. So this one is a limited edition, one of 500. It was manufactured in 2017. This one was produced in 2018. It's number 272. Just beautiful. This is the largest steam engine that Walesco makes. Um, these came out um, pretty much as a limited edition run. And in, in 2016, you could actually start putting an order for one. The first D32s were uh, $19.99, $2,000. Then after the, I think it was the first 50 or 100 were sent out, then the price went to 2,500, and now they're 27, 2,800, pushing $3,000. This engine is the 1960s era version of the same thing. This is the original. Now, the, the cool thing about this engine is it was a monster. It basically set the precedent for Walesco steam engines. And... Uh, a lot of features were built on this steam engine, and this is a re-release. The 2017, 16, 17, 18 era, that was a re-release of this original uh, D32 steam engine. So the neat thing about these is they have a monster control panel. You have the throttle, speed control, uh, this, um, this is basically an RPM or pressure gauge. This controls the throttle, you open it up, to speed it up, close it to slow it down. This right here is an oiler. And you put oil in here to lube up the system. And it's the exact same thing as that one uh, in the process, basically, and the mechanical aspect of how it works. And I'm just going to leave that off because I'm going to oil it up. This is a line shaft control. When I move it, it opens and closes. Basically, engage. It'll engage the shaft right there. And this is all in German. I do not speak German. And this is a feed pump. You open this up and it'll pull water from this um, reservoir tank that goes through this piping and then comes into the, the uh, boiler. Fills the boiler just like a continuous flow of water. Inside the chimney, there's an exhaust if you see that, the little holes, so all of the exhaust shoots up into the chimney and creates a condensate. The condensation runs down through the pipes here, if you see, and dumps into uh, this condensation tray. And this will actually fill up with water that you can dump out. And then some of the other condensate will, or uh, blow off from the engine will jump back into this piping and dump out into this reservoir tank so the thing that made these steam engines cool back in the day was you once you got them running you just literally filled up that little reservoir tank and you could sit here and run that steam engine all day long as long as you kept water in it and as long as you kept it lubed up it would run um, these uh they're not toys but they are toys they are basically miniature power steam plants um, the same way that we get our our electricity from duke energy or any other company wherever you're at that supplies your power this is basically a, power, a mini power plant and so it uses the steam um, you know a lot of coal fired there's nuclear generators uh, for uh, nuclear power plants etc essentially they're creating the steam energy converting it into the power with steam the steam engines and uh, turbines and hydraulic engines and all those. There's lots of different types of engines out there. But then ultimately that feeds into a generator. So over here, this one, as you can see in the, the new one, it's all pretty much the same setup. And as the flywheels turn, they in turn turn a little belt that turns this generator. And this generator actually produces power that you could hook two leads into and run light. The, the cool thing about these is this is just a, a modern version of it, and this is the original one. Now, I do, not have, I do not have this generator hooked up. It is actually 
it's similar to the one that goes on this engine, but it's not the one. So I bought it thinking it was. Some of these are silver, red, and green. Um, and actually, you know, there may be some of you um, more knowledgeable about Walesco's saying, oh yeah, that is the one. But when I mounted it, I mean, it does mount up. It just, um, there it goes. It's bumping up against the edge here. So it just tells me, I think there was a different one that went on this. Um, and some of you may know exactly, but it's the same way. There would be a, a little belt, spring driven pulley belt between here and the generator. And then those little tips on the end of this is where the power comes out. So we're gonna actually run both of these. And um, I have a gentleman that's wanting to buy this one. I've had it for about two years, maybe two and a half years. And I've never run it. Um, I've actually never run the 1960 one. So I figured what better opportunity. Uh, I probably won't have two of these again. Um, unless I just decide to try to get them. But I'm going to run it and share this experience with you. So the first thing is we have to fill up with water. And this is distilled water. And I've actually already filled this tank up. And so you take, this is the filler port. Let me see a little that off this unscrews and then you have this little funnel funnel goes in and then essentially you put water in there distilled water and you watch until it fills up a, just a little over halfway some people fill up just to the bottom of the window some people fill it all the way up the more water in the tank when you start the longer it takes for it to heat up and then this is the blow the pop-up valve blow whistle to let steam out when you're feeling it take this and loosen it and it just unscrews Oop, no. i'm going to drop it here and so with this open it allows the tank to breathe as you put water in otherwise it'll take forever to fill this tank up so i'm going to put this back on i'll come right back okay then the next thing you want to do is put oil in the oiler so we take these off and back here is the feed uh, feed water feed pump so i'm going to unscrew that as well i'll set it right here take the oiler off set it right here so i'm gonna put oil in both of these now this one has a, a feed oil pump that comes with the engine uh, oil feed oil pump uh, or feed pump oil uh, everything else uses just regular steam engine and honestly i think a lot of folks just use the same oil for the feed pump so uh I use, I have steam engine uh, oil that's made for real steam engines, full size ones, and I actually bottle it up. I sell it on our website. Um, it's just something I do to help the hobbyist um, just to provide a service. But if you need some steam engine oil, let me know. Uh, check out our Steam Engines USA website and also um, our YouTube channel. So I'm going to put oil in the oiler and the feed pump. And then all of these little point of contact. So anywhere that you see metal rubbing, like going into here, we'll put oil on that. All these of the eccentrics, all these little contact points. If you see these are little oil, oil ports, those little holes. Everywhere you see a hole, right here on the axle shaft, um, right there, the contact points for this as it swaps over back and forth all those will oil all of them um let's see going down the eccentrics and give it a, a spin over as you oil it and then um the flywheel excuse me the um governor so all those little contact points right there we'll put oil on them and that's something that everybody can do kind of on your own time. So I'm going to, I'll show a, a little, a couple of uh, applications and then I'm going to fast forward. So we'll put oil in there, but all these little contact points, we just, just a little drop of oil. That's all it takes. All of these. And you want to make sure you hit all of them. Um, you don't put it on the belts. If you can see here back where the belt is, but these little metal contact points, you can put a little bit of oil in those. Just where it contacts, it takes away any friction on the, the governor. 
You'll put it all the way around it. Anywhere that there's metal, metal contact. And then I'll come back and just lightly brush it on. Get it down in there. Like here, when you, this comes out, if you can see these are fully extended, you'll put some just on the, the metal as it goes in and out. It'll start lubing itself, especially as it's running, if that makes sense. And then I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna do the same thing to this one, and then I'll come back and we'll be ready to um, uh, cut them on and get some steam moving. All right, so I put uh, probably, I don't know, probably 10 or 20 drops of oil down in the oiler just to get a good coat, fill it up. Um, and as I was putting oil in, applying the drops, spin the flywheels, and it actually pulls, you can hear it, and uh, pull in the oil. So um, just another little thing to be aware of when you're doing that. So what we will do now is I have these um, plugged into a variac generator i mean a, a voltage regulator over here so we're going to spin this over it's basically on 110 you got 115 120 i'm going to pull it back to about 100 as we start um, and i'm going to plug this in and actually i may pull it on back a little bit more cut it on and so I have both of these plugged in and so cut that on I'm not sure if it's on or off we'll know real quick if it starts to heat up um, and so the reason I have this plugged in uh, to this uh, voltage regulator is once these start going um, they'll just produce as much steam they'll just keep get hot it's basically one temperature wide open so I can control the temperature by adjusting this. And I guess you'd have to turn it around here. So right here is my indicator. So I'm gonna put it up here, right there on about, just before 110, I'll put it on 110. So now I've got 110 volts. If you can see that, of power going to the steam engines. And I'm over here, put my oiler back on, my oiler cap on. We have the water filled up. All of my valves are closed. So everything is clockwise, closed to the right. And as it heats up, once it starts heating up with power, uh, steam, power steam starts coming on. My whistle, oh, you can hear it. I just let out a little bit of steam. Same thing up here, I've got a weight on this one. This is old school style. And the weight holds this little top piece, if you can see. It holds a pressure valve down. So everything kind of clockwise. If you open up this valve on the boiler, either of these, water will start draining out. So all these are closed. And then over here, I'm gonna put this cap on the back so now everything's lubed up ready to go I'm just waiting on the steam to pull up now while I do that I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna fill up my reservoirs I'm gonna put a, maybe about a quarter inch of water in here I think it's uh, 200 not liters but everything's in German so I'm not sure but I'm gonna put some water in here and that way everything will be complete. So I'll be right back. All right, so I basically filled up the bottom of the trays with water in the reservoir just to keep them ready to go uh, to start circulating water and opening up our feed pump when the time comes. I did have to switch this over. So if the I is up and the O is down, that is power on. So now this one's starting to warm up. Should be able to hear the, the water boiling inside of this one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make a two part video. I'm gonna get in this one now, it's 14 minutes in length. And that I'm gonna basically call the setup, how you set these engines up to run. I'm literally gonna come right back and it's gonna be part two running to, well, let's go D32 steam engine. So thanks for watching Steam Engines USA from High Point, North Carolina. 
have a great day and if you want to see the engines running click on the next video thank you goodbye